Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Aaron. And I'm Anna, and today we're talking about kindness. Kindness, it's one of those loaded, loaded terms. It can mean a bunch of different things. But I think it's important to note that kindness on any level can change someone's day or even their life. Absolutely. You know, a few years back, my mom was diagnosed with cancer, and this news turned my family's lives upside down. We barely had time to sleep, much less think about the everyday things. And it was so cool to see my church family come alongside us and through simple acts of kindness, provide such support. We got notes of encouragement. We had people cooking meals until both our fridge and freezer were full. Even people came to clean our apartment because they knew we didn't have the time. You know, those acts of kindness changed my life back then and it's still something that impacts me today. That's so cool to see a community actually acting out kindness. We're gonna be taking a look at today's God story, guys. We're still tracking with Moses, and we're gonna see how kindness played out in his life. Where do animals go when their tails fall off? The retail store. Hey guys, I'm Carmen. Today I wanna to tell you a story about a time a bunch of years ago when I was in high school, my friends and I had this idea that we wanted to hand out hats and mittens to homeless people who lived on the street in winter when it was really cold. So we went to the mall and we went to this department store and we asked them if they had any extras that they'd be willing to donate. And they said, we do, but you're gonna have to work for it. If you're willing to come back to our warehouse here in the back and count them out and sort them, then you can have a bunch to take with you. My friends and I kind of looked at each other and thought about what have we done? This just looks like one big chore to us. But we sat down and we started sorting and counting. And before we knew it, we were having a lot of fun. We were singing silly songs, throwing hats and mitts back to each other. And the people that worked in the store would come back on their break and they'd even help us out. And what could have been a really big task turned into a really fun time of hanging out together. And at the end of it all, we had a lot of hats and mitts to hand out to people who needed it most. It's amazing how God's love and kindness can change a situation and bring people together. And that leads me to today's big idea. God's kindness brings people together. Last time we learned that the Israelites, also known as the Hebrews, had found themselves as slaves to the Egyptians and living in Egypt. And we learned that the Pharaoh created a rule that any baby boy born to an Israelite family had to be killed because Pharaoh was worried that the Israelites were getting too big in number. But the Hebrew midwives, Pua and Shifra, do you remember those heroes? They followed God's way and not Pharaoh's. And they did not let those baby boys die. One day, a mom and a dad had a baby boy and they tried to keep him hidden but eventually they couldn't any longer and so they put him in a basket and hid him in the river. Pharaoh's daughter found that baby and she rescued him out of the water and took him as her own son and she named him Moses. Well today in our God story we're gonna find out what happens to Moses. We're gonna look in the book of Exodus. Exodus is the second book in the Bible in the Old Testament. The Old Testament was entirely written before Jesus was born on this earth. Moses had grown up in Pharaoh's household. He was raised as an Egyptian, but when he got older, Moses learned that he was a Hebrew. And in his curiosity, he went out one day to see how the Hebrew people worked. And when he did this, he saw an Egyptian man beating on a Hebrew man. Moses got sad and he knew this wasn't right. Moses wanted to stop this Egyptian man, but he went too far and he killed him. Moses tried to hide what he had done. The next day he went out again to see the people when he saw two Hebrew men fighting. When he asked, why are you fighting? They responded to him, why? Are you going to kill us like you killed that Egyptian? When the Pharaoh found out what Moses had done, he tried to kill him. So Moses escaped and he ran off to another place called Midian. When Moses got to Midian, he sat down near a well. He watched as seven sisters came to the well to get water for their father's sheep. And while they were there, some shepherds came and tried to chase the sisters away. They treated those sisters very poorly. When Moses saw what was happening, he helped the sisters and then he gave water to their father's sheep. The sisters went back to their father. His name was Rual. Let's read what happened next. The girls returned to their father, Rual. He asked them, why have you returned so early today? And they answered, an Egyptian saved us from the shepherds. He even got water for us and gave it to the flock. Where is he? Rual asked his daughters. Why did you leave him? Invite him to have something to eat. Because of the kindness that Moses showed to Rual's daughters, he invited Moses to come and stay with them and he invited Moses into their family. Moses gladly accepted this kindness. Ruel was also known as Jethro. 
And later on, Moses married one of Jethro's daughters. Her name was Zipporah. Moses and Zipporah had a son named Gershom. Moses had done something wrong and he had to leave Egypt, but God still had his best way in mind for Moses. And although Moses was alone, he was still able to help and show kindness to others. And God's kindness brings people together, which is exactly what happened for Moses when he joined Jethro's family. Well guys, I have to run. Have a great week and remember to be kind to others. All right, turn to the person next to you. And answer the following questions. Question time. How did Moses show kindness to the woman? How did Real show kindness to Moses? Why do you think God loves it when we are kind? Candy Chaos. How many times can you say the key verse before things get messy? Say it with me. God said, My grace is all you need. My power is strongest when you are weak. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. Get ready. Three, two, one, go! Well, those were two great examples of kindness. First, we saw Moses showing kindness by rescuing the sisters from the shepherds and help bringing water to their flocks. And then he received kindness from their dad when he was accepted into their family. And in Moses' case, we see kindness bringing together two families. And we've got a story for you about a beautiful friendship between two girls and how when life was hard, kindness brought them together. Let's check it out. So I'm Miranda. And I'm Brooke and we're best friends. We know each other, but we love each other. We just kind of bonded really quickly. We instantly started having sleepovers and we were talking like all the time. Soon after, Miranda and I became friends. Um, my granny, she um, was diagnosed with cancer. It was really hard for me because um, I was living with her at the time. I'm still living with her now. Yes, there was a time when I became sick and it was devastating to me because with Brooke living with me, that was another added element. And when I got sick, it was like, whoa, people came out of the woodwork to help. The neighbors, my coworkers, and my family, and my new acquired family. I remember having the conversation with my husband about what what we would do, what what we could do, and uh, the amazing thing is, and I just love this, is the it's not even a question. It was a, of course, of course, we'll do what we can. So my mom and I decided that we would let her come over a lot more. We gave Brooke a key, 
to our house so she can come over at any time. We set up a room for her in the basement where she could have her private time too, but the girls could still sleep with each other as well on the weekends and just start just sending over food and soup. It was just a, we don't know where this is gonna go, but of course, it, Brooke is very, very welcome to be here and, and we'll be here for both of them. It feels really, really great to be a part of Miranda's family because um, I never really had a motherly figure, but now I have two motherly figures, her mom and my grandma. <sighs> I, I mean, obviously I cannot think about it without crying. Um, about how much it just means to me that I made a difference, that like we made a difference, actually. Um, it, was, it was so worth it. I'm better today, a lot better, and Brooke is still the light of my life, and Miranda's another daughter, and they hang out so much together. They're at one house or the other, Instead of just at my house, we could also cook or have sleepovers or play cards at Brooke's house with Brooke's grandmother, Kathy. We go to the park, we take my neighbor's dog on a walk because we love, I, well, I love animals. She's okay with them. We make pancakes and other fun foods. And make my parents clean it up. It's great. It's a good system. I'm hoping that we will be friends for life because this has been fun. I've really enjoyed Brooke's company and we've really gotten close. Brooke is moving away at the end of the school year, so I'm hoping that even when she's gone, that we'll still be as close, or at least very close. We will still be able to talk and hopefully we'll be able to visit each other since she's not moving too, too far, just an hour or two away. So hopefully we won't lose that close friendship. Hopefully we'll be friends for life. They're more than friends. They're sisters. What a beautiful story, and it's a great reminder for us to not overthink kindness. Acts great and small all impact lives and show God's love. And you can see how close these two families got together. I mean, when Brooke's grandmother said she had a new acquired family, I mean, that really like summed it up. Absolutely. And whether we are opening our homes up or providing a meal for someone who's hungry, even being a listening ear to someone who's hurting, we are practically showing acts of kindness to those around us. Mm -hmm. Let's break into our small groups and see what this looks like for our own story.